Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your workstation to connect to a chef server. In previous videos, we use chef solo to configure our nodes, but now we will use a real chef server to manage uh, the nodes. Uh, using a chef server is probably the most common way to use chef in production. It allows you to use uh, different features like data bags, uh, where you can store sensitive information like uh, credentials and certificates and all that. Also, there's another feature provided by Chef Server, uh, which is the search that allows you to, to query the different information of your infrastructure. So at the moment, there are two types of Chef Server. Uh, one is uh, the hosted Chef, which is basically the cloud version, the the software as a service product uh, from the from the chef organization. Uh, you can manage up to five nodes for free in this version, which is uh, quite enough for for a small uh, infrastructure. You could have like uh, one development server, one staging server, and another for production, or a couple web servers for production if you use a load balancer. But yeah, anyway, um, there's another option, uh, the open source version, which is basically obviously free. You can get it and install it on any server. Um, and But you can, you can have up to 25 nodes for free in this version. So if you, don't, if you have more than that, you need to buy a, a license for that. So, um, there used to be a product called Enterprise Chef, but in a few years ago, or a couple years ago, I think, that was uh, basically uh, integrated into op the open source version. Um, so yeah, let's. the first thing we want to do is to create a, a new account. So let's go to this sign up page and enter some information. Kind of company, an email, and a username. Uh, tutorial, and a robot. And after you confirm that email, you have two options. One is to create a new organization, and the other is to accept an invitation to an existing organization. In this case, I'm gonna create a new organization so we can basically test and, and create things there. Let's call this um, Carlos Inc. And the short name should be um, a, new, a unique name. So, let's call it like this. So once you have the, the organization, you can access the UI for, for the chef server case you can see different tabs for for different things the first thing you want to do is to to get your user key so the user key is very important because it's is the one that allows you to to authenticate to the chef server so um chef basically auto generates one for you but um, the private key is not stored on the chef server so basically you just have to uh, reset the key so you can get the private key. So let's do that. Uh, you can go to administration, select the, your user, and then just click on reset key. Reset key. And now you, you can download this key. So 
So right now, if you have a fresh uh, Chef DK install, you can, if you run the knife, some kind of knife command, let's call, let's run um, knife cookbook, this for example. And you will get an error because you don't have a, a knife configuration file. Also, you don't have the, the key there. So basically, Chef tries to find the key in this location. So let's generate, let's create a knife.rb uh, file. That's the configuration file for knife. And you can get one from here. The knife configuration file should be for per organization. So, okay, let's get that file. Keep. So, let's copy that file here. Let's copy that file. Just download it. I think it was four. No, it was five. To so okay, we need to create a new deer in 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 the in your user home directory called chef dot chef, and in that deer we are gonna copy this chef. Uh, let's call this just knife door rb. Also, let's copy the the key, the private key. Uh, Carlos tutorial. To chef. Okay, so now we should have our knife configuration file here. And uh, we can see some basic information that Chef uh, needs, the knife command needs. Uh, the node name is basically the, the use your username. The client key is basically the path to the to your configure to the sorry to your SSH private key. And here on the Chef server URL you can see this is the URL to the to the your to your chef server organization, and you can specify here uh, the path to the to the cookbooks of your current project current project. So, okay. So now, if we type chat uh, knife cookbook list. You should see that we don't have this error we had before. So that means that basically Chef could connect to the to the Chef server. So now that we have that connection, uh, we can do some things. For example, we can upload uh, our cookbooks to the Chef server. Um, in this case, uh, I'm gonna use Berks for that. Uh, as if you remember in previous videos. Uh, we saw that Berks is basically the the package manager for cookbooks in the Chef ecosystem. So if we if we use Berks, we can basically if we use Berks, we can basically uh, add dependencies to the to the to the Chef uh, repository, and basically it will make our life easier. So if we use uh, community cookbooks in, in the chef projects. So um, let's check it out something here. Right here. So on the policy, on the policy uh, tab, as you can see, there's there are no, there are no cookbooks yet. We don't have anything there actually. No roles, no data bags, environments, clients. Well, actually, clients, we have one. Uh, Chef auto generates this uh, this validator uh, key. The validator key is the one that is used on the provisioning 
on the provision end of the nodes is the one that Chef uses to connect the node to the Chef server. But we are not going to use this in this video. So our main goal is to basically just upload the, the Chef, uh, the cookbooks to the Chef server. So now we can do that if we run Berks upload oh sorry by the way i'm using a previous uh, project we use in another video uh, it's called symphony for app i will put the to the link to the repo in the in the video description this is basically a uh, a chef project to to provision a, um, an instance with uh, Apache and PHP so we can uh, run a, a simple uh, Symfony 4 app so it's just one cookbook here and it has two recipes PHP and Apache um, and we have two dependencies here Apache 2 and PHP but as you can see here well uh, there are some warnings here that I don't really know uh, what's happening there but anyway the files should be uploaded we can see that we uploaded uh, like one, two, three, four, like eight different cookbooks. Even though we have only two dependencies, PHP and Apache 2, but these two cookbooks have many other dependencies, as you can see here. So if we run Berg's, I think it's Berg's list. Yeah. You can see the the cookbooks we have in in the in the Berks file. This so basically this for these eight cookbooks, and here is the is so wrapper cookbook, the Symphony app cookbook. So now if we go to the UI. we refresh here we should see the different cookbooks listed here so let's click here you can see the more information from for, from the cookbook uh, the readme the versions we have um, if we have attributes you can see all that information here templates yeah basically everything related to the cookbook so this is basically the the way to upload uh, cookbooks to the chef server with Berks. So if, for example, let's say we we make a little change to the to the cookbook. For example, let's just let's just add something here. So if we if we try to upload that change to the chip server, we will see that basically nothing happened. It just skipped the the, the cookbook. So that's because Chef doesn't allow you to overwrite uh, a cookbook because it's supposed to be. That, that version of the cookbook is supposed to be applied to a node. Um, it's not really um, it's not really a common practice to basically uh, apply any change to that version and overwrite that change and apply that to a node. You should basically create a, a new change and change the version and basically apply the new version to, to the nodes you want. So in that case, I will need to change the version of the cookbook here 
so this is increase the this number here and then now we can run Berg's uh, upload again and as you can see the, the the change the new version of the cookbook was uploaded and we can also see this in the if we refresh here we can see this here on the UI you can see version 1.1 and um, yeah basically that the change was there so now we have the two versions of the cookbook and if we had notes here we could apply that new version to a particular uh, note. So I, I think that's it for this video. Uh, in a future video we'll see how to uh, apply these these cookbooks to the to a particular note to to basically um, create an, a, a note in a in a cloud environment for example. So thanks for watching I uh, remember to to leave a like and subscribe.